1983. Good to talk to you again. You're sounding good here in southeast Idaho. Elevation's 5,000 feet. Running vintage equipment. I appreciate it, Mr. High Plains Drifter. Good to talk to you again, too, my friend. Hope you have a good uh, New Year. All righty. The end has finally came with this big project here. Uh, what we have here is a gatekeeper to drive an eight 10 meter linear amplifier with uh, quite a few little functions to it. We'll uh, kind of go over them one by one here. But um, this is a fairly large unit uh, equipped with a 200 amp non regulated power supply. Uh, it floats around 19, 19, 2 volts, drops to around uh, a 15.4, 15.5 at full load. So uh, this is a good uh, overview of it right here. Without the top on it. And first off, we're going to go into explaining <coughs> the remote feature. Alrighty, well, this amplifier is fully remote head driven, meaning the only uh, switches we have on the actual box is the dual pole uh, breaker switch to turn the actual power supply on, and the, uh, the fan switch and the fan speed switch, high and low, basically, for the six fans. The only reason these are not on the remote because these were actually... Uh, an idea that the uh, fellow wanted afterwards, after the remote was already built. So, alrighty. I'm going to explain how this is set up here. You have a remote box that is fused. That fuse was mostly there for, you know, pretty much for me for first testing, make sure just in case uh, something shorted out because we are dealing with a lot of wires in this box, if you could imagine. The way this is utilized is we have an 8-pin. This is an 8-pin mic plug <clears throat> with a female, with the male on the back of the box. And this is a 4-pin mic plug. I had to use an equal of both of them to fit everything. I could have used two 4s, and, but, you know, I would have had to add an extra 4. So we'd kind of utilize that to where we just used an 8 and a 4-pin to carry everything that we needed to carry. Alrighty, this first LED here, that is the uh, key in LED. That is the transmit LED. And the neat thing about this, as long as you have the power on, even if the whole uh, box is off, if you're barefoot, the, uh, the transmit LED still works. The transmit LED actually is uh, somewhat of a, not too complex, but more complex than normal circuit. Here's the circuit that I designed for the transmit LED, utilizing a voltage regulator, a 5 volt relay, a read relay, keying circuit, and so forth. You ask, well, why did I go so... Uh, why did I go so uh, crazy on that? Well, the reason is we have a lot, we have a lot of things uh, already hooked up to the negative side of the relays, and sometimes that can uh, get a little tricky once you have a lot of stuff hooked up that way. So uh, I thought it'd be best to go ahead and do it this way. And the story behind that is, yeah, why didn't I use a 12 volt relay, right? Well, I uh, bought this and actually bought a 5 volt by accident. <laughs> so, and to be honest with you, I've been kind of wanting to play with a little bit of Ohm's law. Uh, formulas and everything because I'm still new to all this you know so it was real neat to design this circuit and work uh, perfectly perfectly so what we're doing is from the 19 volt 18 9 19 volt floating supply this voltage regulator cuts at 19 volts down to 12 then from there we have a 330 ohm resistor which cuts to 12 down to around 5 5.4 volts and then it is utilized with a keying circuit to key the transmit LED, which is right here. All right, not to get too deep in that on. We have the switch to turn on the two-pill section, the two-transistorized section here. Yes, they are bright. There is the two-transistor section right there, utilized with two SD1446s, which is real neat to be able to utilize that modulation. All righty, next... 
we have the switch for the eight transistor portion, which is the final stage of the amplifier. And that would be this portion right here, utilized with two inch RF uh, broadband transformers. So, theoretically, this means you could run the two transistor amplifier or the eight transistor amplifier or both. And it also uh, brings you to some more options that we'll explain here in just a little bit. All right, next on the remote head, we have the preamp. All right, the neat thing about this preamp is, let me get down to the preamp section here. There is the preamp section right there. Let me get something to point with. There's the preamp section right here. I know the board isn't the best looking thing in the world, but like I said, I'm still new to all this. And it's the first time I've ever put the preamp on an actual copper board. We have the 100 ohm right here, which is used as a current limiting resistor to make sure that it only gets exactly 12 volts, 13 volts. But the neat thing about this preamp circuit is that it is equipped with what you call a invert circuit which is back here it's real nasty looking <laughs> to be honest with you i'm uh it's hard to see with the black uh surrounding everything but basically what the uh in the, the invert circuit <clears throat> what it does is it allows the user to actually use the preamp with the box off there's another view of the preamp circuit right there try to get a back view of it I ain't got a lot of lighting here, but there's the back view of it. So the real neat thing about this preamp circuit <clears throat> is um, the, the, the user can actually use the preamp when the actual um, amplifier section is off, meaning that the uh, two transistor, eight transistor section is off. And the majority of amplifiers, which uh, pretty much everyone I've done up to now as well, it, it, the preamp circuit only has power when the uh, actual box is on and the relay is getting power. So uh, the invert circuit allows this to happen. And uh, if you are familiar with Texas Star 10 meter amplifiers, they as well allow you to use the preamp with the box off. So that's one uh, very unique thing about this uh, amplifier um, is you can use the preamp circuit with the amplifier off. As in not the power supply portion, but with these two switches off so next thing which is one of the neatest things about this amplifier this is a c-class by default bias amplifier with an ab option there is the ab biasing board right there which will give the base of all 10 of these transistors just enough to conduct as an ab class portion requires but the way it is um, configured, AB bias, of course, is best on sideband because of the linearity it produces. Here's a sideband switch right there. Whenever the user is on sideband, it is AB biased. All 10 transistors and the two transistor section and the eight transistor section is AB biased. When it flexes off, it's back on C bias. So that is the real neat thing about that. Now. <clears throat> the next really neat thing is the high, uh, and also I'd, please forgive me for not having any labels on this yet. That's actually coming uh, next. The user actually has labels uh, designed that he would like to use. So that's why I, I have not put any labels on here yet. But you have the high, low, medium switch right here. All righty. The neat thing about this is I had to figure out a way to keep the actual RF signal inside the amplifier and not traveling through this 15 foot worth of wires coming through the remote and then 15 foot back to the amplifier. So the way we're doing this is with this section right here. We're using two SPST 10 amp relays. And again, this is for current limiting to only give these relays exactly 12 to 13 volts. 
the way this works is simple. This high low medium switch, when it's on low, it sends a ground connection to one of these Pacific relays. And when that happens, the RF travels this direction on in and goes through. And this and this uh on the low it would be going through these two 20 ohms that are that is uh that is in series here and it comes on out and goes into the two transistor section. When it's on medium, that relay turns off, this relay turns on and goes through just one. Uh, excuse me, I had that backwards. This right here is for the medium, this right here is for the low. That's uh, two 20 ohms of parallel 10 ohms. There's your 20 ohm. Okay. So on low it goes for that, and then on medium it goes through here and go on out. Now if it's on high, it just simply flows through via this jumper right here, on out, on through. So with that doing that circuit that way, it allowed me to keep the RF in the box close to the two transistor section. And still utilize the transistors for the medium and low. And the neat thing about this, if uh, you actually can add one more resistor and have a, a low, medium, medium, high, and high, and just turn both relays on and make it go through a third resistor. Another real neat function of this amplifier is this right here. These two bolts here. What this is, is this is an input and an output. For example, when I first get this wired up and all complete, I wanted to run the whole amplifier on low voltage. Here's my low voltage supply. Three real heavy duty marine batteries. To test everything out on low voltage first. So what did I do? I hooked the three marine batteries up right here and worked absolutely perfect. And also, also it is a input, meaning that you could run the amplifier mobile, just like what I just explained, or run it as an output, meaning you could just run the 200 amp section, these 450 amp transformers, and the filter caps, and just run the 200 amp power supply. For example, maybe the fella has a, a 10 transistor, 12 transistor, uh, even a 4 transistor amplifier that he would like to test or use. He would just turn the power supply section on, leave the amplifier section off, and run it. So you not only have a 2 drive and 8 uh, 10 meter amplifier, you also have a 200 amp power supply. And I believe in doing all of them that way because if you went and bought a 200 amp unregulated power supply, this is exactly what you would get anyway. Just, of course, without the amplifier part. So the next neat thing I'd like to show you, the top here, which we will put on here in a moment, hook up and show you that. But the fellow wanted to be able to turn the fans off for one. For example, if he's using the preamp with the box off, he don't need the fans on. And he wanted a low switch because he's worried, you know, the fans could be a little too loud, which actually they're not, but he wanted a low switch. So the way we utilize this low switch here is this is a three-pole double throw switch, okay? The power comes from the hot bus, which is right here where all the hot wires hooked up to the ferrite beads. <laughs> it comes from the hot bus to the bottom switch here onto the voltage regulators for the fans. Those are uh, 7812, uh, KA7812 voltage regulators. Make sure those fans stay the same speed even when he keys and the voltage drops. So them fans won't be slowing down, speeding up, slowing down. And it comes from there. We're going to be tie strapping all this up, by the way, getting it looking pretty. Comes from there back to the switch. So when he has it on high, it just flow on through these three connectors right here for the fans onto the fans. When he has it on low, it flows to these big hopping uh, five watt resistors in parallel, equaling about uh, 15, 
15, 16 ohms at 10 watts to keep them good and cool. Alrighty, try to get it dark as we can in here. Here is a final production with the top on and the fans going. Six real beautiful blue fans. Yes, sir. Believe it or not, the fans don't put the power supply under a load that, that much, as you can see. It dropped from 19 to about 18.3. The fans are running about uh, uh running about 750 uh, 0.750 amps per two. That was on 19 volts, so uh, uh, that's actually what they're pulling through the linear voltage regulators. But uh, uh, 12 volts wise, they're pulling about 500. So you're looking at about uh, 1.5 to 1.8 amps for all of them. So there you go. Got the switch right here. Turn the fans off. Back on, and here's your high and low. See if you can see them dim there on the low. Sorry, that ain't, that ain't the box smoking right there. I'm holding a cigarette. I'm going to put it down on the floor. <laughs> That'd be bad, wouldn't it? All right, we're going to flip it to low here. You might have been able to see them dim and slow down right there. So that's low on the low side. Back to high. Low high, you can see them dimming and everything. So, there we go. That's her uh, lit up, ready to be keyed, ready to have the hammer dropped, <laughs> ready to have some uh, uh, drop the hammer on some of them Michigan, northern Michigan mud ducks up there. No doubt about it. <laughs> All right, let's see what kind of output we're getting out of her.